Hey everybody, how you doing? Today we're going to be doing something that I I really wanted to do a long time ago. Um, just because it was, uh, I don't like stock stereos in, in my cars. So, you know, being a DJ for so many years, you know, you enjoy having that little bit of a higher quality or loud sound, not to mention going deaf. So, this probably was part of it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to be installing an amp and a subwoofer to my truck today. So I'll show you what that entails, guys. And it's real simple, you don't really need that much. So here we go. First thing you're going to need is a amp wiring kit, which in this case, um, since I only have a 300 watt amp, I have a 680 watt wiring kit just in case I wanna upsize the amp or the sub or do something later. You will need an amp if that's what you want to do. You will also need a subwoofer, which in my case, I have a Kenwood. You will need something to cut and strip wires. So I have my Klein wire cutters and strippers in case, oh, there you go. In case we drop anything, you want to make sure that you have a magnet to get any bolts or anything like that. We are going to need a 10 millimeter wrench, depending, um, if you, you can use, uh, let's get it upside right, you can use a open end box end wrench or you would be able to use a socket and a ratchet. You would need to have a, um, you would need to have a deep well socket because this is going to be to take our battery terminal off because you got to make sure you're safe. We are going to need some body tools because we're going to have to take out the dash and we're going to need some electrical tape. And the reason for this is, there's multiple reasons. Um, I will be using these to, uh, like the ends of the wires, I'll tape them up to make them smoother so that they don't catch on anything while I'm pulling them through the firewall. And I will also be using them to tape the wires together to follow the wire loom coming from the battery going through the grommet in the firewall. So I'm gonna use that to kind of hold everything together. And, you know, we'll go ahead, we'll get outside, we'll get started. guys first thing we're going to do when we get out here is we are going to take off the battery it's our 10 millimeter wrench that we had so you don't have to take both terminals off but I will be just to make sure so there's our positive terminal there's our ground terminal so there we go that's step one the next step is I want to see um, if you noticed on the wire there was a fuse block on the actual wire so I'm going to look in my relay box now that you guys are sitting on so that way we can see what we got to make sure I have room like I did with my other one. And yeah, it looks like I will have room. That block should be able to sit right over here in this general area. My last one was more of a tubular one that I was able to put there. So we'll see what happens. Worst comes to worst, I can always just tap in somewhere else. So we'll just lightly put this on. Now it's time to go in and start taking out door trim. So if you follow us along, we'll get over on the driver's side. Guys, first thing we want to do is get our floor mats out. So as you can see in the last video I did, it's pretty simple. So I guess they're going to be extra clean this time. 
floor with them in the bed. I'll put these caps back on here so I don't mess up the threads or lean on them. Make it a little bit more comfortable for me. And yeah, I didn't vacuum before I put the floor mats in. I was being lazy. So what we need to do is take out this um, sill trim here, which is going to expose all the wires that go to the back. After we get that out, we need to take this out. And once we get this out, we'll do the same thing in the back, and then we'll be ready to run wires. So these just pop up off of clips. Be careful so you don't break the clips. And there you go. Put those in the trunk. All right, so here you go. You can see that, um, I'm guessing the person that had this originally, oh look, I'm richer, got a penny. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna run right along these wires that are in here already. Get rid of all these wire pieces that are in here from the last owner that didn't use it as a business truck and we'll take a look at what we got everything's tight so what we're going to do now is there is a let me find the grommet first and then i'll show it to you all right guys as you can see we're back i i found the grommet i'm going to have to push it through from this side it's the one that the speedo cable goes through on all the main wiring. I'll show you that in a second. But what I did is you can see I loosely put that on there because now we're going to see where this is actually going to go in. And I'm hoping it's going to work easy if we're there. Let's see what the easiest place would be. If it's on there and I pull it tight, I might be able to get it in that way. There is room in the dome, so I can actually go over the top of the relays once I get this to settle in. So, I don't think that'll be an issue. So this should go in pretty easy. So what I'm going to do to make sure is I'm going to take this and push that under over there. I don't want it to accidentally come over. I'm just going to pop my lid on so that way I can get kind of a dry fit for this. And that looks like that would work fine. So what I am going to do now is if you come over here and you look down here on the side, Right here, you can see where this whole big wire loom goes through and it comes out over there, but you can go out the side, out the back of the box. So I'm gonna run that wire and I'm gonna get it going back. And I don't know if you guys can see, but this grommet right here, this big grommet right here, you have this like little like rubber nipple thing on there. I'm going to cut the tip of that off, and then that's what I'm going to feed my wire through. So, maybe you can see it a little. So guys, you can see right there at the top, there's that little nipple right above the... You have your speedometer cable, and then you have all the other wires. There's that um, like little protrusion there. We're going to cut the tip of that off, and then that's where we're going to feed our wire through. So, let me get that done, and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. You can see I have my wire coming out the back. I went down through the box. I came out the back of the box so I can shoot straight into the grommet. And what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll zip tie this wire to the main wire housing. So, as you can see, this will be in here like this. Come on. That will be in there like that. It'll look... It'll look nice and clean. And the wires are going down. We have room for the lid to go on. So that's what we're gonna do. Next thing I'll do is I'm gonna clip the top of that, um, the grommet off. I'm gonna push it through. 
and then I'll show you where it comes out on the other side. So we'll be back when that gets done. All right, so you can see guys, I have it going through that grommet going through there. So now we're gonna go look on the other side and see where it came out. So as you can tell, it is hot as crap out here today. So now we're going to go lay under the dash in traffic. So let's see what we can see here. And let's. So, as you can see, you have your gas, you have your brake, your emergency brake, and then if you go right alongside your emergency brake, there you go, that's where we come out. So, we'll be able to go down along this whole side behind all this wiring. And then just follow down, go through this channel, go underneath there. I will take this out here, we'll run underneath here, we'll go underneath there, and we will pop out right back here. And that's where we will make our connections for our amp. So let me get it ran, I'll show you what it, what it looks like when it gets done. So see you in a few minutes. I got the wire ran, so now I'll show you what it looks like, then I'll get all the molding back in, and then give you a quick look at what that looks like. So, that you can see that the truck's gonna look stock almost. So, well, actually it will look stock until you get to the back and you see the amp. So, you can see the wire comes in from up there. It runs behind all the wiring over there. It goes down along these boards here goes underneath here. I don't take this out because you have to remove the um, seat belt to be able to do that. Then it goes to the back and it comes out from under here, goes under here. Same thing with this one. You just have to fight with this to get it underneath. It goes to the back. I have it going up under the plastic piece and it comes out there. So you have a nice clean install. So when this gets put back here or mounted to the back of the speaker or whatever will be fine as you can see there's loops here that's because i had extra wire so i want to keep that wire in there in case i want to run um not per se another amp but if i wanted to run it to the other side of the truck i can just pull it out run it along the rubber skirt in the back and connect it on the other side if i wanted to attach the amp to the box so let me get all the moldings back in and I'll let you know what that looks like. Got everything back together. I will have to take it back out because I need to run the RCA jacks all the way to the back and I need to run the remote line all the way to the back. But I'm going to show you, I'll run, I'll get all them lines ran and then I'll, you know, basically be the same thing. The next process is going to be taking out the whole dash. So I'll show you what this is going to look like and then I'll start working on the dash. So you can see we're back together in here back together there back together there and there so honestly the only thing that tells you something's here is the something you can see so i'm going to go ahead and go in and cool down a little bit you can see i'm sweating my butt off out here today it's like 90 degrees picked a great day to do it so um i'm going to go ahead and cool off a little bit come back out and start round two so I'll see you on the other side when I take out the dash. Hey guys, how you doing? We're back. I have the amp completely wired in the back, except for the power wire. All them wires are tucked away. Um, I have some pictures that I'm going to show you of how I ran all the wires, including these. Um, I now have the remote line and the RCA wires ran all the way up to the front. So now all I gotta do is take them from the bottom panel where everything, where the power wire came in, take out the dash and run everything up and across. So that's where we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start taking out the dash now. So uh, let's get started. Can't run them wires yet because I don't know. I would like to run them underneath the rug and then come up the console if I have enough. But if not, I'll just have to go up, go over the steering column and straight in. So let's see what we got. Let's not step on anything. So first things first is all these knobs stay in. It's all the plastic pieces that come off. 
Same thing over here. All these stay in, your vents stay in, all your gauges do. So sometimes you can just grab it and wiggle it a little bit to get it to come out. But this time it doesn't look like it wants to. So got to take the bottom part out, which I hate doing. I would prefer not doing this step. So I'm just going to get behind it with my body tool. Wherever I can, that is going to be good. Or, let's see if... Actually, it doesn't tuck all the way up underneath, so I should be able to just pop this out. start over here since I can get under it there you go pops out pop these out at the top going nice and easy as to not break it now we're not going to pull it all the way out we're just going to expose the back area of it let me put my steering wheel all the way down now And there you go. You can see behind the whole dash. And so can I. So what I will probably do is run my wires straight up over the steering column all the way in the back that you guys can't see. And then, as you can see, here's the radio wiring right here. So I'll be able to work on that. But let's get the radio out first. So we have that out. So now I'll be able to pop this piece out, which by the way, guys, every Tundra I've had has had this piece cracked. So, and every Tundra I've worked on has had that piece cracked also. You just gotta take your time. actually forgot one part you got to take that out so to make it easier on myself I'm going to pull all these off and we'll put that in the back seat as Courtney's cringing the whole time so now, this whole module can come out and sit down. As you can see, the only thing that holds all this on is these little greenish-yellow clips. You can see that there's one missing already, uh, right there. So, I'll have to do all this again so I can put another clip in. That's probably why that one's been rattling so much. But what I'll do is I'll probably take the clip off the other one to make it easier on me. Now. Let's see. Still want to know what this switch is since I've never used it since I got the truck. Which is... I don't want to disconnect all the wires if I don't have to. This goes up and it goes into the back of the radio. So I'm gonna have to go get a wrench, which actually I might have, it might be the 10 millimeter. So I'll be right back. Seems as though I am right. 
I was thinking about this, I would have figured out what the bypass was for this radio. And so I didn't have to use the emergency brake to watch movies. You know, for long trips, that would be nice for Courtney. So for our viewers that really enjoy tools, can you tell me about the tool you're using? Um, yeah, I'm just using my 3H Snap-on and my 10 millimeter Snap-on sockets. Cool. I really love them just for the simple fact that they hold so much better. They have a great warranty. And here you go, guys. <laughs> this is what... <laughs> That's the fun part of doing all this stuff. You can see this one is the camera lead. It was put in there. And which wire is this? Uh, the reverse power wire, but because of the way that this radio was connected, it should be fine. Let's see, we get that out of the way. This is a antenna wire that we will, that we're not using. So, let's see all this crap we got back here. There is one thing that I want to take out if I can find it, and that's this XM receiver, because, actually that's a GPS antenna, so, but I'm guessing the XM receiver is that knob. I'll do that on my own time. So now what we need to do is we have to look in here and find the remote line for the amp and also the RCA leads for the amp. It's the microphone. That's nice that everything has labels on it. They don't always. It's fabulous that it does. Found, found the clip. <laughs>